wonderful works by Elizabeth Frink, and today I'm looking forward to sharing some insights into this special collection. So Elizabeth Frink was born in 1930, and she grew up on a rural farm in Suffolk. She played in the countryside, surrounded by the beauty and nature and the animals and the birds. This created a really beautiful, idyllic childhood, but it was against the backdrop of the war. Her father was a soldier and he fought in Dunkirk and this really affected her childhood. The images of brutality of war were very strong in her mind and these themes of humanity, fear and aggression would play out throughout her career. She became fascinated and haunted by flight, motion and the idea of suspension in the air. And we can see these ideas come through in her series of works of Birdman and also her studies of bird like we have in this collection. The long standing legs are planted in the ground like a human being, but the strong beak clasped down like a predator searching for their prey. In the collection, we have standing paws. It was the last sculpture she made before she passed away in 1993. The sturdy nature of the sculpture shows the reliability of the horse, the respect she held for horses, and how she knew that they were a constant within her life. She also found it very difficult to understand the concept between humanity and the way in which horses have been used through war, through brutality, and yet they have stood by our side. Therefore, this image of the horse and the dog continued throughout her life. Frink loved dogs. She lived on a farm in Dorset with her husband, Alex Charky, and he had Hungarian Vizslas, gun dogs. And you see the muscular structure of the dog, the sleek coat, and the wide eyes looking expectantly to their master. It was cast in order to raise funds for Great Ormond Street. We also have a maquette which was commissioned by Manchester Airport in 1962 as a memorial for aviators John Alcott and Arthur Brown. I love the sense of freedom, the moment in time captured in the air. Frink was fascinated with the sense of flight, height and freedom throughout her career and this is really captured in this sculpture. What I particularly love about Frink's work is the tactile nature of the pieces, the textures. I love the jagged edges of bird, the deep holes across the carapace head, and the deep crevices are so interesting. So Frink went into the studio around 8 a.m. She preferred to work alone, never working with assistants, except for during the last months of her life when her health deteriorated. She would model with plaster of Paris and use strips of cloth and wood and card that would be twisted and entwined around metal rods and wire. She would then chisel and etch into the surface, then adding more plaster of Paris to create layer upon layer. Once she was happy with the structure, that's when she would cast in bronze. She worked for over 30 years with Ken Cook who became a very dear friend, and he was the person that introduced her to colour patination. And here we have the buffalo, and this has the beautiful green hues that come through on the surface. One of the joys of this collection is that they all come from one single owner. They were collected throughout their lifetime and they span from the 1950s all the way through to 1993 when Elizabeth Frink died. Each work shows the personality of Frinks and this is fantastic to have in one collection.